What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 12th Python for Finance tutorial with Quantopian slash Zipline. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about taking the next steps with our algorithms. So we're going to be moving off the Centex kind of stuff simply because it'd be rather cruel of me, I think, to do an entire series based on data that people may not have access to. So uh, we're going to be reverting back to creating our own strategy on Quantopian. That doesn't mean we're necessarily going to leave the fetcher behind. Uh, one of the web services that you can use the fetcher with would be uh, like quandle.com, which we've used in the past. But they offer an API to all kinds of data, and a lot of that data is finance data. So we can reference that and use that. And a reason why we might use that is, uh, for example, with fundamental data, you can't use, we haven't covered it yet, but there's a way to reference, say, price history at any given point without manually saving it, and you use literally this function called history in Quantopian, but fundamental data does not come with a history um, capability yet, anyways. They might, but they might not. Uh, so that's a third-party provider, and I'm guessing for some reason they don't feel comfortable giving that, maybe because people might figure out ways to, to download that data. Anyway, uh, but Quantopian has a lot of fundamental data that we can actually access for free and use it like history. So, uh, I don't know if I said Quantopian or Quandle. I get them mixed up a lot. Anyway, uh, too much Quan in their names. <laughs> anyway, so we might use Fetcher for something like that. Uh, but anyway, we're going to move away from that for now and come back to our uh, original script here, which was from part eight. Uh, if you don't have the code, I will try to copy and paste it in the description. If YouTube says I can't do that, I'll put a link to it in the description or something. At the end of all the series, I do post all of the sample code with the text versions of the tutorials. I'm not really holding out or anything on anybody, but it just it takes a long time to write up the tutorials. So I usually just save that uh, at the very end. <laughs> So anyways, we'll take the code from part 8 here, we'll copy that, and we'll just paste it right in here. So, the next step to moving on with Quantopian, you know, you can do daily backtests, and you really can just use Quantopian simply as a backtesting platform, and that's it. But one of the really cool things that Quantopian can also do for you is help you paper trade a strategy and actually trade forward without risking any money, but really trade forward and then I'll help you kind of alleviate a lot of cherry picking or maybe bias and overfitting that you've done. So uh, getting to that point requires you to run a minute back test and, and running a minute back test can be as simple as clicking the down arrow and choosing minute uh, and then running like this strategy. We could do that. Uh, the only difference is at every minute this would be evaluated. Uh, this doesn't change. The moving average is always going to be for days. Uh, they don't currently support, I don't think, doing it in minute form. Although you could save this, the pricing data and perform your own minute moving averages. So if you wanted to, I suppose you could do that. <laughs> anyway, um, so the question is, okay, let's say we have a strategy like this that we really just want it to trade once a day, but uh, we want to run it against minute data. How could we possibly do that? Well, one way that you could do that is with just a rebalance, right? So you could come down and you could have a schedule underscore function. And we could say the function we want to schedule is rebalance, even though rebalance is really going to be a method. I don't know. That's one thing that bothers me a lot about Quantopian. Maybe I'm wrong, but every, all, this is a method. This is a method. But they're methods, but they're not in the context of a class. So it's really easy to call them functions. But the very fact that we're passing context and all this stuff through them tells me, and not defining it, tells me everything here is a method. And it should be a method, because in Zipline, they're methods of this trading algorithm class. But we're calling them functions. It just really bothers me sometimes. Anyway, we've got rebalance. And then we're going to have a date rule equal to date underscore rules dot. And we're going to have this run every day. And then we would have a, you know a time rule. And that would just be equal to time underscore rules and then let's say we run it market open wham bam thank you ma'am done also in here you can put an offset uh, as far as how many minutes you would want it like at market open five minutes later you can put offsets in there that's kind of cool uh anyway so there we go we schedule a function then we could just do something as simple as define rebalance pass context pass data colon and then take this stuff here cut paste it here and then under handle data just pass 
And that's really all you should have to do. And then you could run minute data. Let's go ahead and put this up a little further in the history and run that minute, build the algorithm. Okay, so um, a few things to talk about as we are talking about moving into live. Uh, first of all, on live data, say you're paper trading live, initialize is being run once a day. Uh, so keep that in mind. So if you are, say, tracking history, a lot of people will, you know, track, you know, context dot, I don't know, if you're doing machine learning, for example, you might have features and then you'll have uh, labels, let's say, and you're packing that in. Well, you might actually find that every day this is getting emptied out because people will do context.features equals and then maybe they'll have a, an empty dict. And, but what happens is when you're trading this using live data is uh, initialize is going to run literally once every day, right, at mar before market open. The other thing to keep in mind is with the CSV fetcher, they want you to, one, you can't change prior data in the CSV fetch. So the fetch will run every day, but if you, you can't change any of the prior data, okay? So you have to literally append any changes to the end of that CSV, let's say. Uh, so over time, that CSV will just get longer and longer and longer. Uh, hopefully that'll change eventually, but that's just the way it is right now. So keep that in mind. Also, that CSV needs to be updated by midnight EST. Uh, so again, for someone like me with like, say, the Centex stuff, we'd really like that to be updated by, you know, maybe 30 minutes prior to market open or something like closer to market open. Uh, but that's what we have right now. So we deal with it. But again, for backtesting, we can backtest 30 minutes prior to market open. We just can't paper trade yet doing that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now, uh, as we saw here, okay, so we ran this, uh, this little logic here. And we actually did pretty good, most likely just simply because the market mostly fell. But, and we, we did better than market because of that. Um, so uh, that's our strategy if we were going to go with maybe a strategy that trades on maybe once a day and we don't want it to trade multiple times a day uh, that's how you can do it but I think moving forward we'll probably uh, cut that out and paste it back in here whoops I don't even know what just happened <laughs> cut that out there paste there we go and we'll probably do something with rebalance eventually so we can just leave it there I can foresee us using it at least at some point, uh, but for now we're not going to use it. But what we're going to end up doing is kind of building more on this strategy, or maybe we'll make our own strategy that doesn't use this. But I do like the idea of using uh, at least some sort of two moving averages to maybe dictate uh, where the market is. So are we in a rising market or a falling market? It can be useful there. And then you basically tr change your strategy based on those parameters. You can also add a third moving average. And, uh, and that can help you actually kind of identify a rising market, falling market, and a sideways market. And then depending on what type of market you're in, uh, you, you trade a different strategy. So that's kind of, I think, one of the better ways to go, especially if you're working on purely like technical analysis types of, types of strategies. Uh, but really, even investing or shorting, I, it's really risky to short in a rising market. Okay, but it's kind of silly to not short in a falling market. Okay, so then your next question would be, okay, well, once I've got the strategy that I want, what what do I need to do to take that strategy into a like live testing or forward trading with either paper trade or even like realistic trading uh, situation? So what we can do is instead of uh, running it here, let's cancel this back test from happening. And instead, let's go ahead and run a minute back test against, let's just do the last like few days. Whoa, what has happened? <laughs> anyway, there we go. Okay, and run that. And then all you have to do is run a full back test. So we can click run there. And once this has completed, this little button here will become illuminated. So we'll be able to actually click on it. But we have to wait uh, first for the strategy to actually uh, come to uh, completion here. Okay, so our strategy is complete. Look at us. We are a market beating strategy. Uh, and our sharp ratio is 5.33. <laughs> and our max drawdown is 0.7. Awesome. 
Anyway, that's just because we did a really short time period. But anyways, once it's done, you'll see that we have the option for live trading the algorithm. Great. We'll choose Quantopian for now. We'll give ourselves uh, some more money there and deploy. And then uh, it'll take a second for it to all start up, but then you eventually have the, the str trading strategy live. Um, I actually have another one that I've been running, and it's this exact strategy actually. I've just been using it as a benchmark kind of. And here we go. So this is the strategy here. It's been running for a few days now. Um, in times, it actually beats the market, and then we're kind of matching the market at the moment. But it's actually a pretty interesting strategy, and it also seems to smooth out the market a little bit. And we've kind of seen that actually in the historical back test. I don't think uh, it performs very well in a pure trending market, uh, and we've seen that it's that's just not the case. That it's not going to beat the market in that setting. Uh, but uh, is if there are fluctuations, it will smooth them out. So, but it's actually kind of a nice start to the strategy. Um, to build something around. So we might end up building on top of this. I haven't really totally decided, but I kind of like the idea of trading either an up market or a down market per stock. And then, or in our case, we're trading these ETFs. But anyway, so then you, when you're trading live, you get something like this and you can kind of see your algorithm and its progress uh, in a live paper trading manner. So it's a lot like what you would see if you were trading your algorithm truly live. So anyways, uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.